ever wondered how do you 3D print an entire R2-D2? I'm going to show you. Here we go. Doing your research to one of these projects is going to pay lots of dividends. Um, if you know what you're doing before you get involved, it's going to save you a lot of time and hassle and money. So I'd like to walk you through some of the things I've used as resources to help me do this research. Hopefully you'll find them helpful too. Here are a couple of things that I found really helpful. So astromech.com, wealth of information out there from the community, files, etc. Check it out printdroid.com if you go to their files section and you can see all of the different uh, PDFs and different documents you can download there's one called a print guide If you download this print guide this print guide gives you access to basically everything you need to know to print the STL files it will walk you through printer settings suggested settings it will walk you through the STL files themselves what they look like where they're located what kind of infill you need, uh, whether or not supports will be required. This um, guide right here is extremely uh, valuable information. Um, lots of different parts, as you can see here, uh, that would need to be printed. Michael Baddeley website. This is where you get your files. Patreon subscription for $5 a month unlocks those files on a OneDrive. You can see all of the folders. There's a start here folder, it gives you a document that tells you how to interact with Mr. Baddeley's website and community, the resources that are out there, how to use them, uh, how to get started, things to consider. It's an extremely valuable guide. You go back into uh, the files and you can um, pull up uh, under the uh, main archive section. This is where you're going to have instructions and your actual uh, print files. Instructions, you can see there are a number of PDFs. If you don't understand the PDFs, which they're pretty detailed, you can ask the community. These PDFs walk you through uh, how to put the pieces together, what they're gonna look like, uh, how they're positioned, uh, which part goes to what, what hardware is required. Again, an extremely detailed document. To get to the print files themselves, simply click on the print files folder. You're gonna find about 2,600 different files. Not all of those are for a single project. Um, there are uh, probably about close to 300 files for the project. And if you click down, and I'll go to the main dome, for example, they're split into sections, so they'll fit your printer. Next thing, budget. So for those, those of you that are familiar with Cura, it's a slicer. And when you slice whatever files on your print bed, after slicing, you will see in the bottom right-hand corner the amount of filament that will actually be consumed in that print. You see it right there. You take that number, and I've built a spreadsheet. If anyone's interested in wanting to get a copy of this, I can provide it. But you put in the information of when you start the print, what you're printing, how much filament's going to be used, and it will calculate a total cost. So you can put all the STL files and start looking at your budget. I found this budget in my research from an individual who broke it out like this. You can see this is gonna cost around $3,000. Um, there's a lot that goes into making these components, the electronics, the filament, um, of course, the, the paint, uh, a lot to consider. And you'd want to do that research as you're going through those files that we looked at earlier to determine what it is that you need to get, how much does it cost, and kind of start working on putting your list of supplies together, which gives you a really good idea where you're going to land with your budget. All right, so it's time to get started. And to save you a lot of effort on the post-production work after you've printed your files, to ensure that you're not spending all of your time sanding, all of your time prepping, filling, bondoing, 
A lot of effort and expense can go into that. Let's just get the printers tuned the way they need to be so that you'll get smooth prints. Uh, I'm gonna walk you over here and some of you know that I have built a number of different uh, projects and suits. This Iron Man suit, um, you can see the detail here. Uh, a lot of this, uh, yes, there was post-production work. I'm not gonna say there wasn't. Um, same on the Stormtrooper, but there was minimal post-production work uh, because I let the printer do the work. And I wanna give you an example of what I mean by that. So I recently printed, I'm just gonna pull this off of this dome here. I recently printed these files and you can see, I'm gonna get the light over here a little bit more. You can see how smooth this is. Yes, there are layer lines. Yes, I will still have to sand this, but I won't have to put a lot into it. This will probably take me 30 seconds to sand and then I'm on to primer. And if there are any little imperfections that I need to put in there, I'll use some you know, plastic wood filler, uh, sand that down, call it a day, and then it's ready for paint. So get your prints as smooth as you can. I have a couple of videos uh, on my uh, YouTube site about how to maintain your printer to get smooth prints um, and how to just get good quality out of uh, your printer. And I'll, I'll post those down in the uh, description below so you can reference those easily. Uh, but it's all about getting really solid prints and there's a lot of there are a lot of tutorials out there on how to set your printers up. People argue that it's all about your Cura settings. And I'm going to tell you, Cura settings and slicer settings are important. There's validity to that. But a good lion's share of what produces a quality print is how your printer is tuned. So take a look at those videos, research some others out there that are online. Um, it's really important to pay attention to your printers. So uh, with that, uh, I'm going to show you what we have so far with R2. <laughs> you can see the scale of this, like it's a full size R2 unit. And it's very, very smooth. You got some really fine detail there. Um, you can see all the panels, the pie slices. Uh, this is coming along really, really nice. So uh, all of this is just taped right now. Uh, I just wanted to get it together to show you what we were dealing with. But the instructions in terms of how to get this together, I'm going to have to do a lot of seaming because this was, um, this was cut into different sections. So it's important to let you know, you don't have to have a massive printer like I do right here. This is my Elegoo Neptune 3 Max. Uh, this thing is awesome. I can put huge pieces uh, on this print bed. Um, this print bed gives me a lot of capacity. It's 400 by, that's 420 by 420 by 500. So huge pieces can go on here. But these are two files were designed to go on a print bed like the Creality CR-10S. This is 300 by 300 by 400. And everything has been um, sliced for you so that you can set it on a print bed like this. Now, some of the pieces might have to go horizontally. Uh, some of them, you know, will be able to, or I'm sorry, on an angle. Some of them might be able to just go straight back and forth. Uh, it just really depends on how you set it up in the slicer. Um, but you don't need a massive printer to do this project. All you need is patience, research, and just hanging in there and keeping up with it. So as I go through and start sanding, um, I start uh, you know sealing, um, filling, painting, I'm going to walk everybody through that, how to put it together, what hardware I'm using. So this is going to be a great project. It's going to take some time, uh, but I'm excited to share this build with you. If you've got any questions, please reach out, let me know, subscribe and like the video and really appreciate uh, your support. Thanks, everybody.